Hello, beautiful creative people. Kyla Give Hand here, Giving Hands Creative. And I'm here with a blog hop. Uh, Kelly Johnson from Wings, Worms, and Wonder has asked me to participate in her Draw Yourself Back to Nature blog hop. And I'm excited about it because I'm also going to be taking her course. This will be my first time doing any nature journaling. So along with me on the blog hop is Grace Howes of Red Barn Studios and Virginia Simpson Magruder of Kentucky Girl Designs. So the four of us are doing some amazing stuff over on our blog, so please check us out. You can see some tutorials, and of course, there are giveaways. So stay tuned to the end for that. Okay, so here we are. Um, I have just taken a piece of red cardstock, and I guess I could measure this for you all, let you know what size I'm using. But all this information is down below. So it's definitely more than 24 inches is probably something like 26. I'm not going to give you exact here, but I will go and find the exact. So it's 27, it looks like it's about 27 inches long and about 10 inches tall. So what I'm going to do, because I'm thinking about um, I want it to be something easy, but I also want it to be something portable so when I go on my walks or whatever, um, I can be paying attention to nature and I can maybe like jump back in the car and actually work on it. So I'm thinking accordion style, so I'm just going to fold this in half first. And whenever you do an accordion, you know it's really about straight edges or whatever. And I'm the worst person to say anything about straight edges, you know that. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I don't measure things usually and things being straight is not that important. But when you deal with an accordion, straight is helpful. So once you have that first fold, you're going to take and fold back to the middle to that place where you made the crease. And you're going to do that on both sides of the paper and hope that things are even <laughs> when you do that. Now, I could stop here and have a journal, you know, that is just four panels and looks like this. Um, obviously, I'm going to put some papers on the inside of these um, so that I can have, I'm thinking this would be like a whole spread but then this would have papers sewn in here and paper sewn in here. That's what I'm thinking. But I don't know how I feel about that because I could go one step further and make a really skinny field journal. I think that's what I'm going to do. I like that because I could stick this in my back pocket. Alright, so one more fold there. Which means I need to flip over to this side and do a fold the same. And then from there, I would need to fold these. And that's just a matter of opening that up and go into that middle space. And again, hoping things are straight. But again, it's a nature journal. It doesn't have to be like, you know, 100% everything completely straight. I like the, the rough and rugged look can be can hint towards nature. Now I chose red not for any specific color, but a shout out to my girl Grace of Red Barn Studios because I know she loves red. Uh, but I am actually I chose red because it's what I have on hand, and I feel like art journaling, nature journaling should be easy. Um, you should be able to do it with whatever you have on hand. So now I'm just going to take that and fold those pages. So now I have a nice skinny field journal. I love it. Okay, so what I'm thinking at this point is I need some pages on the inside of this, right? And I'm thinking one, two. Maybe I'll just do two in there. I think I want to leave this space open to do something towards the end. Or maybe I'll do my 30-day thing here. So I'll have my two 
signatures on this end. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go tear some paper, measure it out, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my paper, and I just want to show you what paper I'm using because I want you to know, keep this simple, people. I promise you should keep it simple. So this is white mixed media paper, 72 pound, and it came from Office Depot. Yep, that's right, Office Depot. It's actually not bad paper. I used it for another little project, and it has, I like that it has a smooth side and then the side that's got a little bit of roughness to it. So there you go, from Office Depot. All right, so I cut my paper down so that it would fit inside these spaces. So now I'm just going to fold these in half, just like you would any other book that you're making. And I'm only, I'm keeping it again. I really want to keep this simple because I want it to be easy for me to do, easy for me to come to every day. Um, yeah, so I'm keeping four, four signatures. So that I can have, you know, and the beauty of this kind of book, and I'll show you in a second after I fold these pages, but the beauty of this kind of book is that I can add signatures if I want to. Totally can. So I'm just going to, I don't like to measure things too much, but I do like good, nice creases. So I'm just going to take my bone folder and run over the edges of those. And then I'm going to nest these into one another. And that's going to be, that's going to fit right in there. Now, of course, it's a little long, so I'm going to cut that down using my Exacto and, or my um, box cutter and a straight edge. And so this one will fit right into here. And again, I need to cut that off a little bit just so it's not overhang so that this book still folds the way I want it to fold. So let me grab my cutting mat here. And I'm not going to overthink this, people. I really am just going to grab my ruler, lay it down here like this, and then... I'm going to take my straight edge and just um, go right down the edge just to give me, just to cut off that little bit, All right, just to make a nice straight edge. I say straight with a little bit of sarcasm in my voice. Now, let's see. Still a little bit of overhang. I could live with that. I'll cut this one a little more then I cut the last one and then that way and the reason I'm saying straight sarcastically is because well it's probably not straight <laughs> it will be the appearance of straightness how about that let's see if that one fits in better Okay, that'll be my first signature, and this one will be last, so if it's hanging out, it's hanging out at the end, on the back. I like it. Okay, so, next step is to do a simple pamphlet stitch and get these in. Be right back. Okay, so like I said, not big on measuring. Uh, so, I'm going to start with the one in the back. I'm just going to do a simple pamphlet stitch. I'm going to spread that out a little bit. And I'm just using dental floss. Um, this one actually is my favorite kind to use, but I also use, you know, this came from a grocery store Safeway. It's like the inexpensive version. You know, Reach has some good ones. Um, so, yeah, I the reason I like this Oral-B Glide is because it's really strong. It's super sturdy. Um, and it's really kind of flat. So anyway, it's personal preference, people. I say go to your dollar store, get some floss from there, and call it a day. All right, so for the sake of getting this done, I am going to clip 
that in only in one place. I'm keeping it simple. This is like super simple. Right, so three holes. One about hmm, half an inch in here on the end. One about half an inch here. And again, this is so being eyeballed. And then one in the middle of those two. So I would say right about there. Don't overthink it. All right, then I'm gonna grab my needle and some floss. And I just do three because um, three is easy. I'll probably have some left over, which is fine. Um, sometimes I double this, but I think this time I'm not going to double it. I like my tail to be on the inside, so I'm going to go from the inside out of that middle hole. Leave a little bit of a tail there. I like to leave enough that I can hold it with my thumb, pull it taut, and then come in through the next hole in the back. Some people call this a butterfly stitch. Some people call it a three hole pamphlet stitch. Then I'm going to come all the way over to the other hole at the end and pull that through. Again, pulling pretty taut. And then I'm going to come through the back and back up through the middle. Okay. Now, this is when. I, this is, you know, my nitpickiness. I do like to make sure, so I kind of pull it in two directions. And then I like to make sure that I have a piece of floss on both sides of my middle string. So again, I'm going to pull to make sure it's taut but not too tight. And then I'm going to tie a knot. And I do a double. Not just because I think that's how I was taught and it has become habit. No other reason. Alright, then at that point I'm just going to do a little snip snip to make this shorter and more manageable in the middle. And I actually think I have enough here to do my other one without needing to get another piece of floss. Alright, so now I have that enclosed. So we're coming here to this one. And we're going to do the same thing. Just kind of eyeballing where that's going to be. And it's all said and done. Taking my awl. You can use a push pin for this, but I recommend an awl because it gives you more. Um, space in your hand. So I'm going to come in about half an inch from the bottom, half an inch from the top, and the center of those two roughly there. Again, don't overthink it. Coming from the inside out. Oh, well. Don't need that much on that end. So let's try that again. Inside out. Leave enough to hold with my thumb. Pull it taut. Come in through the back. Pull it taut. Come all the way to the end. And then through the middle again. Now I pulled that all the way out, not intentionally, but all you got to do is make a little space, slide that under. Again, pulling taut to make sure I don't have a lot of buckling in the papers. And then again, tying a double knot to secure that gloss in place. And snip, snip, snip. <laughs> Alright, let's snip that one a little cleaner. Okay. So now, if I had, this, this floss is fresh mint, so I'm going to have a nice minty smell <laughs> to my journal. And I love these 
the, how the white is showing here. Now, if I were a perfectionist, which I kind of am, but if I were a perfectionist when it comes to doing simple things like this, I totally could have lined up these holes to be perfect. You'll see that they're not. Could have lined these up so that they're like exactly perfect and exactly, you know, aligned. But again, this is going to be my simple nature journal. Now, Kelly has given us some, um, oh, before I go there, let me tell you what my plan is for here. So in this space, I'm thinking that I'm just going to take, and I'll have to cut it down. I won't do that on camera, but I'm just going to take uh, something here and maybe in here, but leaving space for my fold and make something like my 30 day. I'm going to save that till towards the end of Kelly's class and I'll come back and do a, a flip through for you all um, once the class is over. But one of the reasons I'm taking this class um, well, aside from loving nature and loving art journaling, um, is I adore Kelly and I think she is an amazing teacher um, and an amazing artist. And you combine those two things, um, I, I just like you just can't go wrong. And she's teaching me something that I don't think I could do on my own. I think I mean I could do it on my own, but I think it helps to have. Um, someone who is like guiding you through the process and giving you exercises and prompts and stuff like that. So she has given us, she gave us a choice for the blog hop of what we would choose. And I chose, she had um, one that was like edibles. So what's in your refrigerator right now? And my husband and I are pretty much about, hmm, we eat about 90, um, 85, 85% raw. So most of our food is, you know, raw vegetables, lots of salads, fresh salads made at home, and fresh salad dressing, that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, that, that's mine for sure. I'm definitely doing that one. So edibles is what I'm doing. And I'll show you. I'll be right back and show you how I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do it on camera. I'm actually, well, I'll tell you that in a second. Be right back. Okay, so edibles is what I'm doing. And because I don't consider myself someone who I'm not the kind of artist that draws and illustrates things realistically. Um, I do a lot of abstract, a lot of journaling, lots of words, lots of doodling. Um, and so I needed some help. So I right now have kale in my refrigerator. Cabbage. This is another kind of kale. Kind of looks like collards. So I got that for the collards. Broccoli. Yum! Love broccoli. Carrots. And then this corn, which I now realize is going to be too big for my book, but I can work with that. So what I'm going to do is using these images that I've just printed offline, I am going to try and um, just do some little uh, one page spread that shows the things in my refrigerator right now. So that is my plan. I will do that as a photo piece and I'll show you the still photos and kind of walk you through it. Um, I'm also going to be using Again, in the vein of keeping it simple, I'm just going to use colored pencils for this first time out. Um, and then I'll try something a little more fancy as, as Kelly, as the course starts and Kelly is teaching technique and that kind of thing. But right now, on my own, I'm going to keep it super simple. So I'm going to use colored pencils and I'm going to use these black line um, drawings to transfer onto my page and then do my own sort of style and stylizing of them here in my art journal. And I don't know yet what I want to do with the front of this, so I'm going to hold off until the course starts to do anything with that. But for now, that's what I got. So I'm going to go and do my transferring and um, maybe color a few, and then I'll be back to talk with you about uh, the blog hop and tell you what I'm giving away. Okay? See you back here soon. Bye. So my process was to outline the front of the image with my pencil, just a regular pencil, and then flip that over onto my page and create a sketch of the image into my journal um, by just transferring that pencil. And the result was a, an outline that I was able to then use my colored pencils to create the actual, um, you know, full image in my book. And here's the result of my very first nature journaling page. I'm really excited about Kelly's class and I can't wait to do more. Uh, but this was my first attempt and I'm pretty darn happy with it. So I hope you'll join me 
or on the blog and uh, just to let you know what I'm giving away uh, here are some quick images of the items that you could win if you enter the give giveaway so this is one of my favorite journals it's a global art materials watercolor journal so I'll be giving one of those away along with a set of 24 Prismacolor colored pencils and Prismacolors are just beautiful and dreamy um, to use so and then uh, to add to that some watercolor because I know for sure I'm going to be using some watercolor uh, throughout the e-course and so I thought it'd be cool to give some of those away as well so this is a little travel set and you got to have some water brushes to take with you so it makes it a lot easier in my opinion to have water brushes um, already filled that you can take out in the nature with you and then one of my favorite pens is the food ball f-u-d-e food ball pen and uh, so I'll be adding one of those to the giveaway as well so how do you get in on the giveaway go over to Twitter follow me there retweet my post about this blog hop then head over to Instagram and do a repost of my blog hop image make sure you use the hashtag wings worms and wonder and make sure you head over to my blog and leave a comment telling me what your Twitter and Instagram handles are so I can check you out in cyberspace. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and create something beautiful today. Bye.